G'day guys. Jason kicked me off my bench. So I'm setting the PDM up on the other bench. So yesterday I did um, the inputs and outputs that I wanted just to turn on when I turned the key on. I was talking to the guys from the link support today and they confirmed that, there are, that the ignition switch is not wired um, to any of the input outputs inside the PDM. That's nice to know. My workaround works. Um, they actually sent me a, an example of using the manual on. But I've got six things I want to manual on, and there's only four manual on options. So I'd have to manual on and then set the other conditions to that state of other things turning on. Which can be done, but my way works works just fine. So today we're going to set up the can. Uh, I've got my G4X, and that is connected. We're using a Link Extreme here. And I will grab the PDM as well. PDM is powered up. Um, I've gone through today and I've manual on the fuel pump, the fan, and the intercooler output. I've done all those. Uh, I manual on the start input as well, and I learned something. We will talk about that soon. Yeah. And I don't think I grabbed my PDM just then. Uh, come on, PDM. We want you to open up. There we go. And I have found this software a little bit glitchy. I'm just going to shut the PDM down. So I'm going to turn off the PDM. I've unplugged the USB. And I've turned off the ignition switch. He's a little bit slow at times. There it is. Yes, I would. Right, that just took a few moments. We are now connected to the PDM as well. So I'm going to start with the ECU. I've got starter control, fan, fuel pump, and intercooler. Um, and we're going to try and move a little bit fast now. I have gone through here and I have set up my ECU. Check out the inputs and outputs I got on this thing. Uh, let's see, have some outputs. Auto speed control and a purge is all I've got on my outputs. Of course, injectors and um, and that GP output is actually not actually in there, so it's actually just got the, the FUD care fault, the fault clear. Analog inputs, we have got a heap. So this thing's got ambient air temp along with the normal air temp. It's got radiator pressure, so it's got a Bosch combo sensor for the pressure. And oil pressure, temp, fuel pressure, temp sensor. Um, I've also got two level switches for the intercooler and for the radiator and we've got a intercooler temp as well so there's a heap of temps going into it but we're going to focus on these outputs that presently don't exist because they're going out by can to the pdm so fan control first fan is on number one yes fan is my first one let me just confirm that. Yeah. Oh no, fuel pump. Fuel pump is the first one. So we'll set up fuel pump. Um, now I have set up some jumping all over the place. This is, this is how my mind works. So I have gone into can. I've gone can set up. Can set up. Can two. No. Oh. There's a link pay pay. On, on number one as well. We're just going to turn that off actually. Uh, 
Um, it's on can two. We've got a Razor PDM. Um, there it is. And I used the can ID of 680. Um, and I've code can devices can two. And we're going to find that device and it will find a can, a uh, Razor PDM. There it is. Look at that. Ta da! So that's the can setup. We're going to do the first one fuel pump. Fuel pump control. Standard method. And we go to the fuel pump relay output. And we're going to scroll down and find it on can. Can auxiliary one. Perfect. And then we're going to do uh, engine fan. And we're going to scroll down. We're going to put that on. Uh, we're going to guess uh, can auxiliary two. Ooh. And then we're going to do our intercooler pump. I wonder if I could do it as a integral a sprayer. Nah. I could do it on integral attempt. We'll have a bit of a play, eh? Uh, I did it, normally just do it on a GP output. Um, temperature, intercooler, either air temp. Um, or intercooler temperature. Let's go with IATs, eh? We'll see if we've got an IAT here. IAT. No, it doesn't give me a temperature. That's not what I want. So, no, that's not going to do what I want. I'm going to do it the normal way that I would normally do it. And of course, guys, don't be scared to try different stuff. GP up at one. Uh, we're going to call it IC pump. And to call a pump. And we're going to put it on, you'll guess it, can auxiliary three. And we probably don't want it when it's running, so we want one and two. Engine speed is greater than five hundred. So that's the engine running. I don't want TPS. I want air temp. And at ATM, it's greater than 20 degrees. Let's go with 25. Okay, I'm just going to store that in the ECU. Now, the other one we've got is we've got um, start inputs. So we've got starter control via the link. Let me confirm we've got a start input into the link first because it's not going to work if you don't have an input and it's not an analog, it's a digital. Okay, just so. Digital inputs, input pins here, start position is on DO1, so that, that's already sorted. So we come down to chassis and body down here, starter control off. We're going to put it on normal mode. Um, deactivation RPM. And I reckon about 250. Um, and that's more for touch control anyway. I think we should be... Um, I think it should just be on when you've got a DI on and a off when you've got the DI off. I think, and you'll never guess where we're going to put it. We're going to put it on um, 
can auxiliary for. Neutral lockout. I don't have a neutral park lockout actually. No, I don't. I don't have a clutch switch going in yet. Right. I think I'm going to store that to the ECU. And I'm actually just going to save as as well. Because um, I've made some changes. Okay, we're doing pretty good time. I think that's all the stuff we need to put on the ECU. I've got the four outputs that I wanted. So let's go over to the PDM. Okay, so here's the PDM. Uh, we've got the fuel pump, fan, and intercooler on outputs one, two, and three. And then start, I've put them on A, D, I, O, five, and six. Now, with a lot of PDMs, to be real careful here, and this is the same, um, we're going to call this A, and remember to push enter, I'm going to call this one B, oh, didn't mean to, to hit the lock on, okay, A and B, for the start, so, I'm going to come back to the start, let's do fuel pump and fan, but Try not to have, well, I, I find, don't have two things with the same labels. Okay, if I set up a output here, what have I got? Let's go on the can. Okay. Can function one, can function oh, two, three. So we're going to go down to can setup. Can functions, can function one. We'll bring this down here. Okay, so can function one, I'm going to do the fuel pump. Oh, wait. I've got ahead of myself, haven't I? We need to set up the can channels. Here, so can channel one. Can function. And from the ECU. Can ID. And you'll see there was a little change in here that started, that made a little, little difference there. So we've got fuel pump, and that's the first part of the can stream, so we're going to leave that on zero. Fault state off, that, that should be good. We're going to do can function two, is engine fan, it's fan, and it's already got the compound ID one on there, so that's quite nice. Uh, so that's the second thing that we had, you know, so we had a can auxiliary 2 was the fan. So that's the second part of the stream. So it's compound ideas 1. Don't ask me why. Well, it's, I do know why, but sometimes the stuff doesn't always have to make sense. You just got to go, yeah, that's how it works. So uh, number 3, we're going with that intercooler pump. And the compound ideas is number is 2. Right, while we're here, I am going to store that into the PDM. Right. And now I can't test any of that at the moment because my engine doesn't yet run. Okay, But I can do the starting. And we've got start B here. Oh, I probably just should have left that there, eh? So... I want start B to come on when start A comes on because they're both the two pins on the lower end are joined together, which are like well, into the PDM and then they come out and they join together and off to the start mode. So I want B, and that's why I called it B, to come on when A works. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to link them together. And this is what I've worked out, guys. This is not from the link. I don't know how, but it should work. If I fire both the pins at once, that's two 8-amp 
outputs starter on a UZ hits about 13 14 amps um, and then it drops back to 8 to 10 so you just about get away with it on a single output um, and later on we're probably going to log it and see what it does see if it can handle it right so I need to let's turn number one on first um, so we're going to go can function four can function four we're going to call it start a compact ID is there uh, start a set to off the functions won't run until the pin mode is set and that is because you know, it tells us when we've done something wrong which is good here it is start a uh, it needs to be output logic and this one needs to be output logic and you see these have gone to blue uh, that means that a program ready to go but they're not going at the present time that's like they're ready to, to happen um, so that's pretty good and right now if I get my test light and I give it a start signal to the ECU did we see that start to the ECU and I've got a another a little testy device attached to my starter output and it is showing 10.7 volts with the battery's a little bit flat it's above seven we're okay and i'm just firing 12 volts into that start a pin and the start is working we can get rid of this warning now because we're good and but we really need that b b1 to work as well to link them together so let's see what we can do there. I'm just going to go over here. What have I got? I got all these screens. It's fantastic. Okay, let's do. Now we're going to make B work. We're going to do a a logic. Now what have I got? Logic one, logic two, logic three. So let's go logic four. And I'm going to slam it on to uh, B, start B. And I'm going to choose a parameter. Now, A, start A, is on um, ADIO5. Oh, I've gone past it. ADIO5 status. Let's choose that. And we'll select that there. And we want it equal to active. Because we need to put that expression in. So that's the ones it's choosing A, B, C, or D, or what it's doing with each of those. So we're going to go with just a simple old A, push enter. Okay, I'm going to just store that into that PDM. Um, and we're going to go back to that. So we've got A and B, good to go. Test light, fire some voltage in, and they both work. So both those outputs are now firing the starter motor, solenoid. It's not actually connected to the solenoid, guys. It's connected to my test equipment. And voila, that is working. I'm happy it's working like it should uh, so that's those setups done um, I'm expecting the fan and the fuel pump and the intercooler pump to work as they should now uh, I will be going and testing those uh, but this engine is now set up ready to run so I'm really happy with that uh, I can make it go from from I can tell Jason to finish shrinking it up and we can do that final bit of testing. 
So really, really, really happy. To tell you the truth, I've still coming to terms a little bit with the software, and, and like with many bits of software that we use, many devices that we use, the first time around, it doesn't always do us, doesn't quite do what we want it to do when we want it to do it. But as our knowledge increases, we become a bit more confident and a bit happier with it. Um, I'm only scratching the surface here. This is some really basic stuff. But hopefully it helps others with using this device on getting the basic stuff going. I'm using it as a relay box. Um, and by the time I looked at the hours to build a relay box and the parts to build a relay box, the PDM's probably about 50% dearer. So that's not a whole lot to the customer. Um, I make money selling labor. So maybe there's not the labor in there, but it's a whole lot faster for Jason to wire it. So if we look at the overall cost to the customer, it's about the same as doing relays and fuses because the wiring is a lot faster. And then when fault finding comes along, like yesterday when I had that faulty coil, mate, that solved so much time. So in that sense, it's probably saved me a couple of hours anyway. So PDMs are fantastic. Um, I wired my first one seven or eight years ago now, and I absolutely love them. Um, they're a great device. I'm coming to terms with the functionality of the link, and uh, I'm, I'm starting to like it more and more as I get used to it. And when it does what it's told, but it, that's down to me more than the unit itself. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful. Uh, it's dinner time, it's getting dark, and we'll talk to you again soon. Catch you later.